Hello and welcome to Fanshawe College's Virtual Open House. My name is John Singh and I work in the Reputation and Brand Management Department of Fanshawe College. Um, I will be the host for today's session. Before we begin today's session, I would like to review a few housekeeping items. Audience webcams and mics are turned off for this session. If you have any other questions throughout the session, please submit it with question feature. To open the question feature, click on the question mark. Following the session, we will have a live Q&A from questions submitted to Krista, and we will be able to try out our best to get through all of your submitted questions within the session time. If you have any other further questions after the session, we recommend that you email myfuture at fanshawec.ca or book an appointment with one of our Fanshawe College recruiters. If you have multiple programs running on your computer system, they may compromise your webinar experience. We recommend that you take a moment now to close any open programs before we begin today's session. And now I would like to introduce Dr. Krista Boyd, who will be speaking about uh, competitive programs at Fanshawe College. Take it away, Krista. Thank you so much, John. And uh... Hello everyone and uh, thank you for attending today. My name is Krista Vogt. I'm the Senior Associate Registrar of Admissions at uh, Fanshawe College and I have about 15 minutes of stuff to tell you, maybe 12, and then I really hope that we can have a dialogue. I, I will start by saying I'm, I love presenting, but I'm kind of nervous. I've never just presented to my computer before. So I do hope that uh, I can give you some valuable information and please do just fill that chat box with questions so that we can have uh, some, good, some good dialogue today. So what are we here to talk about? We're here to talk about the Fantaw College programs that are competitive. Um, I, my former life, I was an English language teacher, so I like to make sure everyone understands the words we're talking about. So sometimes I use the word oversubscribed, sometimes I say the word competitive, all I mean is that it's our college receives more applications from qualified applicants than I'm able to accept. And so I need to have figure out, we need to figure out some way of, of um, just making sure everyone's selected correctly. And uh, I'm just trying to make myself a little smaller so I can see my slides. There we go. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so just, just we get more applications, so we need some sort of ranking system. So that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. All right, so this is the time when, if I'm in person, I ask everyone to put their thinking caps on and tell me how many programs Fantaw College has. So I can't hear you, but in your head, come up with a number. How many programs do you think a college the size of Fanshawe has? 100, 75, 200? Well, let me tell you. We have 23 apprenticeships, 38 one-year certificates. Um, I'll tell you more about those in a minute. 86 diplomas, 29 advanced diplomas that are generally three years in length. We actually have 11 bachelor's degrees. You don't have to go to university to get a bachelor's degree. We have 11 of them and not available for high school students, but we do have 67 graduate certificates. We are, I like to say we're that we're, we're Western University's finishing school. A lot of people come in after their BA or their BSc to get one of our grad certs. So we have 254 programs, 254. If you want to come to Fanshawe next year, there's a place for you. You will be able to come in. What, what I'm talking about today are these small, small minority of programs where it is a competition. So my next, get that number in your head. How many programs are competitive? Am I talking about 30, 50, 75, 100? I'm talking about 11, 11 programs. There are 243 programs at the college that if you qualify, and you apply by February 1st, we're letting you in. So let's get into what I'm talking about. And I'll just start by saying, I'm not offended if you end up going, hey, I'm applying to this program that she's not even talking about. I can go, I got some time free on a Saturday morning. Um, this is like, I'm just gonna be focusing on these programs. Uh, brand new program, commercial flight and aviation, very exciting. Three-year diploma teaches you how to be a pilot, live, airplane training, flight training out at the airport. Very exciting. Um, last year, we actually did accept everyone who applied, but uh, it was just on the cut. I, I had to cut it off on February 1st. We had a lot of folks interested, so I suspect it's gonna be competitive this year. 
child and youth worker, social services worker, um, competitive on the London campus in September. Both of these programs are offered on our other campuses and they're offered in January as well. And uh, those ones are available and open to people who apply by February 1st and meet the qualifications. Only London September. Music Industry Arts, fantastic program. Uh, Juno Award nominees, Polaris Prize winners, fantastic program. And it's so fantastic that a lot of people are interested, competitive. Everything else I'm talking about is health. Right, there are BSCN, our joint program with Western, and then um, the, the programs in red are all of our health career programs. So, if I was in a room with you folks, I'd ask you to put up your hands and I'd kind of go through these programs and go, who's interested in what? So, I'm going to kind of put John on the spot here and click on that question button and type in the program you're interested in because I really do want to know why you came to this session today. What are the things that you're interested in? Um, I'll let you do that typing. And I'll kind of keep talking for a bit, and then I'll go back and see if, if uh, John can tell me what what we're talking about. Um, yeah, so these are these are what we're talking about right now. Um, but I also there are programs. The programs that I've listed on this slide, they're not competitive in the sense that everyone who met the qualifications or met the minimum requirements and applied by February 1st was accepted. However, uh, there was a bunch of programs I closed down February 1st, like literally February 1st, no one else was allowed to apply, but everyone got in before then. So you're going to hear me say the word February 1st a lot. It's an important time. It's an important date. So um, some of these programs, you may have read it on the screen while I've been chatting, but cybersecurity, some of our renovation uh, carpentry programs, 911, you know, that to become a 911 operator, uh, one year program, horticulture continues to be very popular, and then our aviation programs um, and our pharmacy tech and some other programs. Programs. So um, I want, I'm going to talk a lot about pre-health science, but I'd like people to notice that it's not on this slide. It's not a competitive program. We do let everyone in who applies. So that's kind of the story. I know this is why you came to the seminar. You want to know how I get in. Before I get into that, I don't know, John, if you have a sense of, of um, if, if people have been typing in what kind of programs people are here for and what they're I'll interested just... in. This is the most we've had uh, so far. So we've got people looking at uh, medical radiation technology, paramedic, child and youth care, uh, more paramedic, medical radiation technology, MIA, uh, medical radiation technology, again, business, <laughs> business management. Uh, so we've got all kinds of questions to do when we do our live Q&A. So it's, it's, it's good. Uh, looking good, looking good. I'm going to okay. let you get back to it, okay? Thank you. Yeah, so medical radiation technology and nursing are generally our, our most popular programs. So I'll get into the details. So here's what you came in for. How do I get in? What's the secret sauce? What do I need to do? Let's change the question. And, and I wish I could see the smiles on the parents' faces because what I really want to do is put my teacher hat on and talk a little bit uh, before we talk about how you get in, let's talk about how you stay in. Let's talk about how you be successful in these programs. I want to talk about how we're going to find the right program. So many people are like, I am oh, music industry arts, best program ever. I don't really like music. I don't know how to play any instruments. That might not, like, let's think about that, right? Or I, nursing, it's my dream to be a nurse. Can't stand the sight of vomit or blood. Oh, let's think about that. So I'm going to show you some resources about where maybe you can start thinking about what's the right program, what what's your fit. Um, you're definitely going to need the right background knowledge to be successful. If you want a health career program, you better love science. If you want music industry arts, you better love music. Uh, business, better be good at math. Um, and then what skills do you need? Um, so we have a lot of resources on the campus, um, and I, I'm going to go through these quickly, but I can definitely put these in the chat later if you haven't had a chance to write down the, the websites or anything. But we have something called Fanshawe Pathfinder, um, asks you a set of questions and then kind of leads you to where you might be interested. But the best part of that is at the very end, we have something called Career Guides. We've developed a two-page document that gives you the nitty-gritty details. What are you going to do on a daily basis? What's the physical requirements of the job? How much money am I going to make? Are there jobs available to me in London, Middlesex, um, or around Ontario? So good thing to research. 
our advising center um, is happy to talk to you. You can make an appointment and talk to someone for 30 minutes about what you're interested in. And if you really want to dig deep and you have $150, we do have career counselors that will really take you through a very thorough four-hour process to really discover what you want to be. And last thing I wanted to do is just say we have a career coach. The website's not so nice. It's like hard to remember and you might be writing it down, but you could also go to our website and Google career coach or even just Google Fanshawe career coach. I think it comes up, but this is a great tool that'll tell you what are the tasks. So this is what it looks like for dental hygienists. What do you, what do you do? What does a dental hygienist do? Um, but again, more importantly, when you come to college, we're here to get you a job. So it actually tells about, it talks about where are the jobs? Um, are there, it links even to live job postings, talks about wages. So a good place to go to figure out what is it that I really, really want to do. I tend to go fast. I'm trying to slow myself down. Let me know. Uh, background knowledge. Okay. I did hear a lot of people were interested in child and youth care. Fantastic. Social service worker. Um, the only thing we require, the minimum requirement, high school diploma and grade 12 English. That's all you need. That's all you need. Just, But because it's competitive, you need good grades in your high school diploma and your grade 12 English. Um, if you don't have a high school diploma or your marks are kind of in the 50s or something like that, we have a one-year preparatory program called Human Services Foundation. It's a one-year certificate. Gives you a great advantage when you go to apply the next year because you kind of have extra consideration for admission. But more importantly, it introduces you to the careers of social services worker, developmental services worker, child and youth care. You do placements. You kind of figure out, mm, do I really want to be in this career? What's what's this about? Um, it's a great, great opportunity. Music industry arts, again, minimum requirement, high school, grade 12 English. Um, I what you do need, the background knowledge you need is music. You don't necessarily have to be a musician who plays instruments, but you better love music, know a lot about music. You might be someone who produces music or you know, gets sounds together on the computer and produces stuff. You can tell I know a lot about this. Um, but again, if you're not going straight out of high school, which many of our students um, do come to us right out of high school, but some people choose our general arts and sciences one year certificate or our pre-media certificate. General arts and sciences is just kind of like, how do I get used to college and just taking a bunch of courses? Pre-media is very focused on the careers that are in the media industry. Um, so you might cover graphic design, you might cover just different t styles of what's media about, what's internet web design, what's, but also introduction to some of the media technologies and, and post-production. Moving along. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't see anyone say on the on the chat that they were interested in aviation, but I just I just put it in here just in case. Um, again, we just need high school English and math at the grade 12 level, and uh, there isn't a designated preparatory program. All of our students are coming us to us from high school, but uh, you want to have that good grades and you want to know math. Okay, my favorite health career programs. A lot of you are in here because you want to get into MRT. Um, you don't want to hear it, but take the highest level of math you can. Love math, embrace math. Um, math is the Achilles heel of many of our students once they get here. So do take advantage, do take the best math you can. Take as many sciences as possible. Um, and we do recommend the pre-health sciences pathways to, uh, I can't see it, but diplomas and degrees. Um, it's very science-y, but it's, it's, it's a one-year program, hard, lots of courses, eight, all sciences, but it's to train you to give you the background knowledge and the um, study skills you need to get in. So just this is a glimpse of what the first semester of pre-health science is, anatomy, biology, chemistry, math, physics, um, more on the human body. So if you don't love science, but you want to be a nurse or a medical radiation technology, you might want to learn to develop a little bit of a love of science. You only need one science as an admission requirement to get into pre-health. I recommend you take a few more because um, when you get into this program, if this is all brand new material to you, it's pretty hard to get an A in it all, which is what you need to be competitive to get to the next offer. So you don't have to have it. Well, it, it does start from the beginning and if you study real hard, you can get there, but I, I, I do recommend taking some sciences. And I'm sure everyone's rolling their eyes, but 
you need skills. You need time management. You need to be able to focus for a long time. You need to know how to memorize. You need to know how to organize material and how to take notes, all that. I won't repeat it because your teachers are already telling you. Um, and then I would say, and I, I've been at the college for 10 years and I've come across a lot of students who they're on the university track all the way to grade 11 and then they drop to college in grade 12 because they really want high marks because they need high marks to get in. I let me emphasize that for pre-health science, we take everyone. If you, we don't wait list till about May or June. So take the, take the courses that will give you the knowledge you need. Don't worry about the grades. Um, you need to see, if you're taking college level courses, you need a minimum of 65. U level, we just need you to pass. So my little graphic on the, on the side of the slide is just, you know, when are you gonna make the leap for how difficult? All, obviously university level is a little harder than college. And then Fanshawe College those courses are a little harder than high school. So um, take the hardest courses you can so that your leap is a little bit less when you, get, when you do get here. Um, just a quick slide, just to reemphasize the fact that we do have lots of preparatory programs. Um, and we've tried to kind of, um, I, don't, I guess, uh, categorize them so that there's a certain program for certain areas. Obviously, pre-health would be for our sciences programs, media for our music. General arts and sciences is kind of a catch-all for everything. You will notice, and I'm sure I'll get a question about this, you will notice that the nursing program is in under both general arts and pre-health. Um, Nursing, the four-year nursing program is different. It's Western um, that you are applying to, and it is a collaborative program with Fanshawe, but Western will accept the general arts and sciences program as well as pre-health in addition to. I heard there were some people interested in business. Um, currently, our business programs are not competitive. If you apply by February 1st and you meet the requirements, we'll take you. Um, our bachelor's degrees are growing in popularity, so um, they weren't competitive last year. I don't see them being this year, but they are growing every every year. We're getting more and more people interested because they're knowing what how, what a great hands-on experience they're getting um, and getting a bachelor's degree at the same time. So we have lots of other fundamentals programs, though. Business fundamentals is a great program if you don't know what kind of business you want to be in and you want to explore all the different kinds. It's also good if you don't have math because uh, we will accept students who don't have math into this program. And then guess what? You get to take three math courses while you're there so we can catch you up to everybody else. Um, yeah. I know I'm going too fast. I wish I could stop for questions, but we're gonna have some good dialogue pretty soon. Okay, here's why you came to the session. I made you sit through all the other stuff, but I know this is your question. How do I get in? How do you pick people? I I shudder to say it, but I have to tell you, it's grades, 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 grades. I wish I could take into account that you were, um, you know, captain of the debate team or president of the student union or captain of the football team. I, I don't. It's numbers. Pure numbers on a transcript. That's how we're choosing for everything except for MIA. So we, the ministry does ask us to look at the admission requirements. So we do need to take into account your high school grades. So we are looking at your admission requirements, but if you got those admission requirements, that chemistry course, that biology course, that math course, if you got it in high school, if you got it in college, if you got it by taking your GED, if you got it, uh, you know, that year you lived in Bosnia and did two years of high school there, um, we'll take it. So that's the first set of grades we're looking at. And then we are looking at if, if you've gone to post-secondary. So it it is an advantage if you've done some sort of college um, over people who are just coming out of high school. And then for MIA, um, on top of all your grades, we do ask you to submit a piece of music that you've produced, um, either produced meaning you played it or produced meaning you've done some engineering on it or audio production on it. Um, and then that's scored as well as your grades in order to let you in. So I'm sure I'm going to have a million questions on that. I'm trying to keep it high level, um, but it, you know we use our computer to kind of crank through all the numbers and rank everyone, and the people with the highest grades get in. That's how it works. Um, everything I've said and the the gory details are on fanchasi.ca/hcp. I've shared as much information as I possibly can on that website. It details what programs were competitive. It details what it's an estimate. 
um, what kind of percentage grade you're looking at. Um, so the information is there and you can go back to it. I'll go to it in a few slides, but I wanted to see how much time I've taken. A lot. I want to leave room, more room for questions. So um, apply by February 1st. On February 2nd, 2021, everything will shut down and you won't have an ability to apply for these competitive programs. For the other 243 programs, we'll take people until we're full. Use all five of your choices and uh, do have a plan B. So I, I talked too long. <clears throat> Talk too long. I don't. I'm not going to go through these these slides because you're probably all on your phones looking at it anyway. <laughs> so these are these are like this is a sample of the website and and what it looks like and how many seats we're offering and and all that. Just a side note to nursing, you have to apply at Western. We take 250 students, 125 at Fanshawe, 125 at Western, and you do need about a 94 if you're coming out of high school. So. I will let John get to some of these questions. Perfect. Pardon That's me. great. That's perfect. Okay. So first question, Krista, we have for you is uh, when handling my portfolio, uh, what type of format is to be used? APA or MLA or Chicago style? Oh, that is a really good question. And I'm assuming that's probably for the MIA. I know it's a piece of music and it's probably also a piece of writing. Yes. I <clears throat> I actually don't know the answer to that. I can I can find out. Um, I imagine when they send you the supplemental instructions, it might be on there, but if it's not on there, they probably don't. Uh, they're probably not particular about it. <clears throat> but I okay. can find out. All right. Uh, is construction engineering technology competitive? Construction engineering technology, not right now. Um, yeah, it's a, but it's it's getting more and more popular. So it's a, you know, kind of get your application in by February first. But it's good. Mm -hmm. uh, the business and business management. What is the difference between the two? Mm. So, oh man, <laughs> business is great. So we have two-year diplomas. Like, so you have general business. There's business marketing. Um, I don't have it open. There's a whole bunch of business, um, accounting, finance. Those are two-year diplomas. Then we have three-year advanced diplomas. You can start with a two-year diploma and then decide you want to keep going and then do the third year. Business management, I believe, is our degree program. Same thing. You could do the two years, decide you want to keep going to the three years. Then you went, you know what? I actually love this. I want to go to my fourth year. There is a bridging program to kind of catch you up to what you might need, um, but you can keep bridging in until you're all the way done to a degree. So general business and business management, I believe that's the pathway for that one. Um, the other degrees are more specific, like accounting or human resources or marketing. Okay. In regards to programs that only require high school English and uh, uh, high school diploma, for example, uh, music industry arts, are their grades looked at? For example, applicant for music industry arts had 90s in music, but uh, 88 in English. Would uh, the music mark be taken into consideration? That's a great question. I should have said it before. So for music industry arts and for social service worker and some of our programs that only have a couple requirements, we actually take a look at your grade 11 and grade 12 average. So it's an overall picture of everything. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't it's it's on the website, but I mean, I think the average for MIA was around around 80%. So it wasn't okay. skyrocket high like 94. <laughs> okay. Uh, do students need to come right out of high school to have a chance to get into MRT? I am sorry to tell you that for our health career programs, dental hygiene, practical nursing, medical radiation, respiratory therapy, it's been about a decade since we've taken a school a student straight out of high school. And it's just that the competition is so high. We have people with master's degrees applying. We have people with bachelor's of science. We have a lot of pre-health science students applying. Um, yeah, we haven't taken a student straight out of high school for a very, very, very long time. So again, I guess the last question that I got was how many students were taken right out of high school to MRT? So I guess that's the same, just the same yeah. question there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I have further questions. 
Uh, if I go to another college for pre-health sciences, could I get into uh, at Fanshawe College? Yeah, uh, I mean, yes, we, we pre-health science at all the Ontario colleges, they've actually worked the curriculum together. So it is equal, we do consider it equal. However, we do give our own students an edge and every college gives their own students an edge. And that's because we figure they're here for a year, they're paying tuition, they're interested in us. We want to make sure we give them a little bit of an edge so that we're not taking all the Conestoga and Mohawk students over top of our own. So if, you're, if your high school grades were all straight A pluses and if your first semester and another college is all straight A pluses, you have a small chance, but um, your best chance is actually to go to the college where you want to do eventually do your health career program for your pre-health. Okay, and then second question, uh, do, I, do I have to take any pre-health sciences in order to get into the health career programs? Can I do something else instead? Yeah, I mean, we, we, people are applying, like I said, they're applying from Western and they're applying with their bachelor's degrees. We have a lot of people that are applying and their education was from outside of Canada. The only requirements for the program are the math, the English, the chemistry, the biology, the physics, that's the way it's listed in the in the uh, admission requirements. Um, Pre-health science, if you take pre-health science at Fanshawe College, it does give you an edge and it helps equate you or put you on a level playing field with all those university students that are applying. So no one's gonna force you to take pre-health, but there is an advantage and we do we do acknowledge that pre-health science is actually really hard and it's harder than taking some of the other programs and that's why we try to give you an edge um, over taking say another program uh, here's another similar question uh, my friend took a general arts and science to get into her health career program why should I take a pre-health and not a general arts and science program yeah it all comes down to the way we calculate points. Um, Pre-health, you have eight courses. General arts, you have five. And we give you more points the more courses you take. So automatically, you're going to get more points in pre-health because you're taking more courses. Um, but yeah, it, general arts and sciences will give you the minimum requirements as stated. So we don't say that you can't take it. It's just you'll have a better advantage if you take pre-health. Um, and there are, like, it depends on the competitiveness, right? Practical nursing in Woodstock, if you took general arts and sciences and got straight A's, you could probably get into practical nursing in Woodstock. You wouldn't get into practical nursing in London because it's a lot it's a lot more competitive. Um, so you can kind of roll the dice, right? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay. Uh, can you tell me more about the supplemental project needed for the music industry arts? Yeah, and I think that's related to that first question we had. Um, when you apply to the music industry arts, we do give you a whole page that kind of goes through all of it but really it's an mp3 um, or it could be some new technology because you know technology changes but it's you're submitting an actual piece of music that you've worked on you've contributed to so maybe you wrote it maybe you're playing the instrument on it maybe you're the audio engineer who put it all together um, but it's you're it's it's that and then there's a rubric and there's a like they kind of ask you to answer a couple questions about what what your interests are and that's kind of what it's all about when you apply and you get that piece of paper if you have any questions on it there's a nice uh email to email the person directly and have a conversation with them as you fill it out okay i have another question submitted uh last semester my college transcript uh my grades to p backslash f i was made aware of the admissions staff that reviewed my application for transferring credit credits did not prefer the grades like that. If I were able to get the number grades, would that be acceptable? Sorry if this question isn't clear enough. I'm not sure how to phrase it. You know what though? I, I get that question enough that I know what you're getting at. Um, because when we get when we get applicants from that have post-secondary, we just go back to their last 12 courses. What are their most recent 12 courses? And that's those are the grades we're looking at. If we have a pass fail and we just have a P, there's no number for us to use. So we just keep going back in a transcript until we get to 12. So we'll kind of skip that course and go to another course until we find a number. Um, obviously, if you can get a number for us and it's official and then then we'll we'll slot it in and use it for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we're coming up on the hour or, or half hour here. And uh, mm -hmm. what I'd like to do is end our uh, session right now. We want to thank Dr. Christopher Boyd 
for her uh, insights and her passion and uh, <laughs> into today. And uh, what uh, I'd like to do is uh, indicate to the students, uh, thank you so much for doing so. And I would like to uh, uh, have you address any recruitment team issues that you may have further questions to my future at fanshawc.ca. Um, or book a one-on-one -on -one appointment with fanshawc.ca backslash connect. Um, and don't forget, we have further uh, AMA uh, questions coming up every half an hour or every half hour this afternoon here at Fanshaw College. So thank you for tuning in and we appreciate your time and we'll see you later. Bye for now.